You know how they say everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten? Well, I actually did. At the age of six, I learned how to swallow 15 pills at the same time, how to change the dressing of a double lumen Hickman catheter that came out of my chest, and how to lay perfectly still while I received total body radiation. Oh, and I learned that CAT scans have nothing to do with animals. <laughs> so for those of you who didn't notice, my early years may be a little different than what you'd expect. You're probably familiar with uh, learning your ABCs, your one, two, threes, how to share, and raise your hand before you speak. Those kind of things. And I learned all of those things, too. But you see, when I was six years old, I was diagnosed with a terminal form of cancer, late stage neuroblastoma. And a few years later, I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, or AML. Most people think of cancer as a death sentence. And by all accounts, it was. I was going to die. My mother had left my father when I was just two and she was working to raise my brother Angel and me on her own. Lucky for me, my mother is strong and always held the belief that my life was meant for something greater. In the weeks and months that I spent sick and dying in the hospital, she never let on the true gravity of the situation. In addition to tests and phonetics, I also learned one of the most important lessons of my life. At the time, I didn't know I should be afraid. I had no reason to fear. My mom was with me, I had games to play, it was hospital bingo. <laughs> I also had no idea that risks were being taken to save my life. And there was no way I could have ever imagined all of the opportunity that would eventually come my way. At the age of five, life was simple, easy, and exciting, filled with endless childlike possibilities. Opportunity, not a care. My only dilemma was who did I play with at recess, and my only risk was falling down during a game of chase. But by the age of six, the game had changed, and so did the category my life fell into. Life was no longer an opportunity waiting to happen, but a constant game of risk, full of bumps and twists and turns. Now I was faced with a much larger dilemma. I was dying. So was I going to be a risk taker and seize every opportunity that came my way? Or was I going to be a risk avoider and let my circumstances draw me in like a swift undertow? Like Milton Berle said, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. So that's exactly what I did. I built lots of them. My first door was created from paper and a number two pencil. At the age of nine, when facing a new relapse, and increased mortality, my parents didn't know how much time I had left. By now, my mom had married, and we began knocking things off the list. The list was a product of fear. Not my own, but my parents. Parents spend so much of their time and great care ensuring that we kids are safe and cared for, making sure that the risks we take don't outweigh the benefits we receive. And some of the items on my list did pose some risk, like flying in a hot air balloon or skydiving which I haven't done yet. But beyond that, my response to the unknown was not to let my mother's fear keep me from taking risk and creating opportunity. The second door I built was infused with chemo and saline. After two relapses, it was my last chance making it safely to a bone marrow transplant. Obviously, at the age of nine, I wasn't making the medical decisions on my own. But the risk of this particular course of medication was that I wouldn't survive the treatment. But after arguing over options, and because mom knows best, the door was built. And after 45 days, test shows that I was going to make it to transplant. Fear of dying, risk of the medication, and dying, or the opportunity of living. And five years later, here I stand. <laughs> you know, there is going to be opportunities when you have to take risk in order to reap the benefits. Take, for example, Magellan's discovery that the Earth was round. Early explorers were held in place by fear that if they sailed too far, they would fall off the edge of the Earth. 
but one explorer abandoned his fear for an opportunity. So what is fear? Fear is actually a perfectly natural emotion. It alerts us about danger and then prepares us to deal with it. I don't know about you, but falling off the edge of the earth sure does scare the heck out of me. You know, what makes Magellan's voyage so inspiring is that he didn't even set out to make this great discovery. He and his crew were actually looking for the Spice Islands. But when he was given an opportunity, he let go of fear, took a few risks, and what he discovered was far greater than his expectations. And so here we are today, sailing around the world without falling off. You see, when you set out to do something like find an island, you never know what amazing things you'll actually end up discovering, like one of the most important events in history. I've had my fair share of fear. Fear of spiders, fear of my brother's dirty socks, and fear of public speaking, which is ironic because, well, look where I'm at. I've told you about my battle with cancer. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but some of my major sources of fear were created due to the side effects of my treatment. These side effects like hair loss, hearing loss, stunted growth, and being behind in school caused me to become a victim of bullying. So here I am with several justified reasons to be afraid, several justified reasons to avoid taking risks. Afraid to step out and be noticed because of the risk of being judged. Afraid to try new things because of the risk of failure. Afraid to make new friends because of the risk of them not liking me. But more than fear and risk, I was missing out on opportunity. Does your fear of judgment, failure, and not being liked keep you from building and opening doors of opportunity? At times, mine did. But remember that mom I told you about? She would stand for none of it. Like I said, I have built many doors and I have opened many doors. But I find the doors I have built tend to hold way more importance than the ones that were open for me. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate all of the opportunity that's come my way. The third door I built was created in a lesson of civics, hope, and grit. One night while standing around the kitchen table with my moms, the conversation of discrimination came up. And with my history of being bullied, by the end of the conversation, my pro-equality moms were helping me come up with a way to ask school administrators if I could speak to students about bullying. And in a short time, after no initial response to the emails we sent out, my mom, who can be pushy at times, was now working with me to draft an anti-bullying petition. The petition I started in September 2013 focused on giving youth a voice in anti-bullying policy making. My petition garnished over 2,000 signatures in one night, and almost 4,000 by the time I formally presented it to the Washington State Board of Education. And in November 2013, my petition was unanimously adopted as law. <laughs> so, now that the floodgates of opportunity have opened for me, cancer was no longer my opponent. This is when I realized, and I want all of you to realize, that you are not alone in this life. That my voice and your voices have tremendous power. You know, just a few weeks ago, when I was listening to a youth advocacy speaker, I was reminded that there are people who have come before me to lay a path, a foundation for you and me to be successful. A bone marrow donor was one of the bricks laid in my path. I want you to do the same. One brick, one stone, one door at a time. Part of the path that I'm creating for future generations is a website called thepowercave.com. I wanted to reach out to teens all over the world and give them an opportunity for letting go of fear, building self-esteem, and getting involved with the issues that affect them. No longer drowning in my fear of bullying, I realized what I was afraid of a long time ago.
but what are you afraid of? This year, at the beginning of the school year, I was invited to lead my school's anti-bullying assembly. I spoke my truth to a gymnasium of over 800 of my peers. I was empowered. My voice mattered. And now I'm in the process of making the Power Cave into a tangible organization, reaching teens in my community. So if you are at all like I was, even just a little bit, I challenge you. Conquer your cancer, whatever form it comes in, and become a voice of those who have a vision for their future. Find motivation in speaking about your experiences, and remember that if opportunity isn't knocking, building your own door is always an option. Thank you.